Okay, she has an MMSE of 13, which certainly puts her in that moderate range, early moderate range or middle moderate range of dementia. Her husband mentioned that she's been having problems for three to five years, so that would sort of fit. Okay. So she's impaired in all cognitive di dimensions. She's impaired in attention, her language is down, her visual spatial skills are rather poor, her long-term memory is very poor, her short-term memory is in the toilet, and she really doesn't have very much skill for any executive functioning. She doesn't have good potential to do procedural memory issues such as repetition and learning from very basic cues. She has some ability to do that and so that would be something we might want to pursue. I think our best bet at this point given her um, poor ability to, to remember and uh, her uh, poor cognitive capacities in general is to do a lot of external things, to have external calendars, boards, have uh, her husband reorient her to those sort of things so that she can have her day structured and provide some degree of satisfaction for her confusion. She's not falling. She um, was able to hear and see reasonably well. In fact, I, uh, uh, not very smartly, didn't have her put on a glasses for a couple things, and so she might have had some negative points because of that. But, um, but in general, I, I would say that, that uh, she's healthy and premorbidly, she's smart. This is a, a woman, I think, who had had one to two uh, years in college, and she's also able to recognize a little bit that she has problems, so insight is not good. But at this moment, she's uh, in the moderate stages of dementia, and any retraining that we would do, I think, has to be very externally based, procedurally memory-based, and we have to help the husband with that. It's possible that some of this may lift. Yeah. Her function may improve, we just don't know. So we'll have to follow her over time. The best guess that I think you and I might have, certainly I, would be that's not going to be very much. And also maybe uh, her mood is not bad. I mean, she doesn't complain about things, so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. I was hoping if we had someone in the moderate ranges that we'd have a little bit of insight, a little bit of procedural memory capacity, and a little bit of, of, of capacity beyond simple attention. She could not remember my name, for example, after I repeated it maybe seven, eight times in two minutes. Um, and that's usually a bad marker. Look forward. She's on very little medicine, so let's wean her off the Risperdal. And her husband is very attentive and advocating for her. We'll yeah. see how she does. As much information as we can give him, I think that would be helpful because he seems to thrive on that. Okay. I'll see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Darce, thanks so much for putting up with all my questions, and maybe I can give you two some feedback on something. Uh, John, that you were most interested in, mm -hmm. and that is, you know, where we are now. And uh, the testing uh, reveals that we're in about the moderate stages of dementia. Mm -hmm. In the level of moderate to severe dementia, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do with the identified patient by themselves. And so the action comes with the caregiver in the long-term care facility, whether it's an assisted living or nursing home, or the spouse or the adult child, and that's tough. You know, if he gets depressed or angry or annoyed with us or, or what's going on in the assisted living, that's going to make a big difference with how she is. We, know, we now have data to know that if he gets depressed, she gets depressed because he's depressed. Doris is not able to think on her feet anymore, so issues that require judgments and decisions are not going to be very easy for her, from finances to cooking to cleaning and such. So we really have to help him with the kinds of things you're suggesting, not too much like throwing down orientation down her throat, not too little, to where she's just sitting in a chair all day. And what that uh, happy medium is, is, you know, is anybody's guess, but it's reasonable to make efforts to do things, especially if you get her buy into things. And also, they're, they're, uh, uh, although her long-term memory and short-term memory are not very good, there are some things, little islands in there, that she can uh, bring back, and, yes. and, uh, and that would be certainly something you'd want to do, so rewarding that. These people have a varied view of their identity, and we know what they used to be like. Let's really get to know that. Let's really get to know what their preferences are, and as they get very severe in their dementia, let's, let's optimize those options so that if someone likes to to uh, do sports and talk about whatever, you're going to make sure that element is, is, is there in their life for them. And, and you look at that more than you look at function. That becomes the marker for well-being and your, your outcomes rather than function because that becomes less of an element when people get to MMSEs of 10 and below uh, or even 15 and below. We didn't get a chance to ask you whether she's able to dress herself, for example. She does. She does. That's great. Now, that might go down at some point, usually sure when we... Will. 
uh, get to, to the stages that I have her at, uh, it starts to have some, yeah, start to have some trouble. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are behaviors that we want you to give us some feedback on yeah. uh, so that we'll know how to help you. Well, let me summarize what I'm hearing from Dr. Heyer. Your wife does have a substantial degree of dementia. Oh, yes. Which we know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much of this is is overlaid by the drug Risperdal. It, mm -hmm. It's not everything, though. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what we're going to do is pursue this tapering, mm -hmm. and then you and I will talk again. So sure. I'd like to see her back in about six weeks. Yeah, I think so we have an appointment. Her husband is very motivated to help her. He's the best clinician in the room. He is the most important person in her life uh, for, for her and for him. Well, it seems like between you and Dr. Ackerman, he's very happy with the honesty and the feedback you had given him. I did want to mention one other medical issue. Mm -hmm. Her leg swelling concerns me a little bit. Mm -hmm. She's on a diuretic. She is sedentary, as you said, but mm -hmm. the right leg is more swollen than the left. Mm -hmm. So while we're doing all this, I would like to do a little um, scan on her leg to sure. make sure there's no trouble with her veins, mm -hmm. that she could have a clot developing in that leg sure. because she's so sedentary. Mm -hmm. um, we can set that up as an outpatient. We will make you an appointment for that. So okay. before I see you, that test will be done. Mm -hmm. If it's possible to bring one of the nursing assistants from uh, Flint River, that would be helpful too because they apparently spend a lot of time with yeah. her, and that would be helpful to sort of get a, a sense about what are the troubles where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Okay. So that's why I made the suggestion at the end, if there's any way we can get that caregiver to come in, that would help. Well, it's tough getting her out of bed. She dresses well, but I have to lay her clothes out. Uh, she sometimes puts the clothes on wrong. So we get a real uh, good information about where we are with her, and that would make a big difference. The message that we give the Gero Psychiatry, the Gero Fellows here, is the message that I try to give them is the most important intervention they're going to do is their person, how they communicate, how they connect. Doris, thank you so much for coming to put up with all our questions today no. and, and, and other things. <laughs> do either of you have any other questions or concerns? No, I have no concerns. It's just that uh, I hope it's beneficial. That's all. Help somebody else down the line. All right. Because uh, we were shooting blind, trust me. Mm. It's, a, it's a blank wall when you hit it. Well, thank you for coming, and I hope we can do something that will be helpful to both oh, you I'm and sure your wife. Oh, I'm sure you will, yeah. Doris, sure. we'll see you again in about Thanks, six guys. weeks. If we don't have to help us, maybe thank it'll you. help somebody thank else. You. Very nice. He wants to help his wife. He wants to be in charge. He wants to get the data. He wants to get the facts. And so that's, that's our obligation, is to make sure that his thirst is, is slaked when he leaves the office okay, I can do this, I understand this, this is what's going on, and, and I'm ready.